Hi, I'm Mark. I received a living kidney donation from my sister's best friend. So my kidney started to fail. Actually, I found out on my 26th birthday. I set up a call with the hospital and say, on July 22nd, I want to start my routine physical yearly at that point because I didn't do it before. Um, at the time, I was boxing competitively in the amateur realm. And on this day, would, number one, get a clean slate to know where I'm at physically. And number two, give me the opportunity to show the boxing committee, here are my labs, I'm ready to go, did a full physical, I'm at 100%. So that's exactly what I did when I went into the hospital. I said, Doc, don't waste your time. I run every morning at 6 for about 45 minutes to an hour every day, getting ready to compete in the professional realm. And I just had that confidence of just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fit, I'm ready to go. And she said, okay, great, that's great. I, I, let's just get this out of the way. So we did that, did the full physical, did all my CBCs and all my blood work. And she says, I'll give you a call in two days. I'm pretty sure you're fine, but I'll give you a call in two days anyway. Sure enough, two days, didn't think nothing of it. She called me, she said, Mark, we need to bring you back in. I said, Doc, what's going on? I was just there. Why do I need to be back there? She said, there's been an elevation with your, at the time I didn't know, with your creatinine levels. It showed a percentage off. I was like at 1.9 getting into the twos. And she said, we need to do a biopsy to make sure that this is correct. I said, sure, okay, what does that consist of? I, I didn't know what a biopsy was. I thought it was just some more blood work. And she says, you're going to stay overnight at the hospital. And I did. And I remember going into the, to the biopsy room and they stuck a needle about this big into my back. And I'm like, oof. I mean, they numbed it. They, they got me prepared for all of that stuff. They took a piece of kidney out. And uh, I still didn't think nothing of it. She says, you're going to be here for a couple of hours. we got a room for you guys upstairs. And I waited, just patiently waited, didn't really think nothing of it. But I was, in the back of my head, a little bit nervous on like, why am I coming back here for, for kidneys, right? At the time, now that I'd done my research, I was urinating, I was always hydrated, I drank so much water, and I just didn't have any high blood pressure, nothing. So there was no signs and symptoms of me having kidney disease. And uh, the doctor came up, another doctor in nephrology, and said, uh, based on our findings, you have FSGS, focal segmental glorosis sarcosis. I was like, what? Let me break that down. I couldn't even spell that out, number one. I couldn't say that, number two. And number three, I mean, that was just like some death sentence word, right? But um, that's when my battle from boxing to fighting for my life began, right? And... Uh, that's how I found out I had kidney failure. Living without working kidneys, I remember when I first started dialysis, I was so scared. That was my most downest time. Uh, I felt emotionally lost. I felt emotionally alone. I felt deprived from who I was as a human being because I didn't know what it meant to take three hours away from your life every day to survive. And that place, I came up with a quote, and it says, a healthy person has a thousand wishes and a sick person has one. I thought about that every day. You know, my life and my philosophy in life were different, the way I thought, the way I understood things, you know, and to understand that adversity introduces man to self that chair definitely showed me that. I needed to learn what, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't want to learn. I learned very quickly what depression was. I never had that, you know, depressing state growing up. I, I was always competing in boxing, so I never really thought about all the other, not, all the other stuff that I was dealing with. But here, you definitely get to know who yourself. And um, I don't know about anybody else. It was the worst, yet the best thing that ever happened to me. When my nephrologist told me that living kidney donation was the best option for me, 
uh, again, I was still fighting with myself because at the time I was on dialysis yet. He said, but I do want you to go to the dialysis clinic and I want you to see what they do. He was like, just go in there for orientation. I didn't know in the back of his mind, you're going to start dialysis in the next couple of weeks. Because at the time, my creatinine level already raised to 17. I said, Doc, I still don't feel anything. But he knew in the back of his head because, number one, I was in denial. And, and two, I still felt like I was good, but my blood levels didn't say the same thing. So I felt very... Um, what's the word? Uh, I didn't want to ask people. I didn't want people to think of me that to feel sorry for me and, and things like that. I remember I was talking to mom, I got to ask people, you know, uh, I need to ask people, my sisters, my cousins, everyone else who can help me out with a, a living kidney donation. You know, how am I going to do that? She said, that's a tough one, son. And it took a lot, a lot out of me. And I decided to put it on social media. And in all honesty, if it wasn't for the social media platforms that I use, and I don't have 50 million followers, I don't even have 10,000 followers. I don't even have five, okay? I was able to generate enough donations so that I can find my match. All you have to do is open up and say, I need help. Don't think people are going to feel sorry for you. Because I felt sorry for myself and I'm saying, man, I don't want to do this because people will feel sorry for me. I want to do this because I really, really need the help. And going on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Fox 11 News was the best thing that happened and contributed to me getting a live kidney donation from my sister's best friend. Um, and all the other people that stepped forward, you know, I'm very, very thankful for that. Did I find asking donation hard or easy? That's a good question because once I put it on social media, it was, huh, that was the easiest part. The hard part was tuning in, telling people my story and seeing if they would help me. You know, um, I put it out to... The world, it was on the news, it was on Instagram, it was on Facebook. So it was out there. I didn't really get to ask people directly. And we live in a time now where social media is a big platform where you can talk to people, they can understand and they can do whatever they got to do. But the hard part was tuning in and stop thinking that people feel sorry for me. I wanted to survive. I wanted to live, you know, and through the process, I learned that people wanted to help. They just didn't know how people didn't know anything about donation. They didn't know anything about, you know, uh, what the cause is. You can live with one kidney. It's upon you to get that information. It's upon you to learn what it is to be a donor and a recipient. So in case you were to come into a situation where someone asks, well, what's the process in donation? Just call this number and they'll go through it. Yeah, that's easy said than done. But I had to also educate myself to say, look, you can live with one kidney. Everything will go back into normal. You can go back into a regular job six weeks after post-kidney uh, uh, donation. Okay, um, You won't have to take any pills. It was just certain things that I had to really learn for myself. If I'm asking for something so huge to also educate myself on what they would be going through in the process. I remember getting rolled into the operating room. We got there at like nine. That was our, that was our, our go time, 9 a.m. We didn't get seen till about 12, but they took her in first. And, uh, I remember I was really, really nervous. They do your blood work right before you actually do the transplant. And she was already in, in surgery. So by 11, 12 o'clock she was in. So they started to prep me around one. And I was just so nervous. I remember my hands were sweaty. I think I, I made a towel, felt like I just gotten out of a shower by rubbing it so much. And they, I've seen maybe three doctors, an anesthesiologist, a nurse, 
and uh, another person, an RN that was just in the building. And it was clean yourself off. They had these wipes, these, these soap wipes. Best thing I've ever, ever, ever had in my life to take a shower without having water drip and not having to, to clean up. They made me, they gave me about four or even six little pamphlets. This is just to get my mind off of what was really happening. And I looked to my fiance, I'm like, look, this is amazing. This is like, this is some great showering tool that I can use. I never done that before. It's usually a traditional shower. I was so clean. I felt I was like, wow, I feel so great. And uh, there was like, Mark, you're up. That was go time for me. Uh, uh, at 12 o'clock when they put her in, I was at, at 1. They were going to be done by 2. So they were trying to prep me around 1.30 to get in it too, so it would be a transition of a donor taking kidney out, uh, kidneys out, donor uh, recipient comes in, and he gets kidney. And sure enough, I was going in there, and the room goes from 60 degrees to like negative 40. It felt like it, okay? Um, and I go in, I'm like, oh man, I'm so nervous. He's like, we understand. There was like three people there. I remember very, very clearly. There was a person on the computer. There was a nurse. And there was my anesthesiologist. There were three people there. I was so nervous. I was like, uh, can you play some music just to calm my nerve down? I'm so nervous. And she said, sure, what would you like to hear? Uh, my automatic thought was, play Tupac, you know. I, and it was so aggressive. I was like, I don't know if this is the type of music that's good for what I'm going through right now. <laughs> they all started laughing, which is great. It made me laugh. And I said, can you just play Shawn Mendes, It Isn't In My Blood? And that song specifically talks about never giving up because it isn't in his blood. And I remember the anesthesiologist said, man, that's too polar opposites of music for you to get into surgery i said man that's how i feel right now and he said all right we're gonna go in five four three starts putting the anesthesia the anesthesia in my body and i was out i was out oh my donor my donor the amazing the amazing angel that saved my life i remember we had a conversation she looked at me and said are you here just like that. She says, are you here? I'm here. She says, no, are you mentally here? I'm here. Okay, good, because I'm here. And we did a lot to get to this point right now. That gave me some chills. I was, I was like, wow, this woman has strength. Really, really does. And I remember after... She even asked the surgeon if he was here. And I asked her, why'd you do that? She said, we just wanted, I wanted to make sure that he was present. We did everything we could to get to this point. I wanted to make sure that he was present. That was our only conversation. Was I here? Oh, after surgery. Here, let me, let, me, let me just take you step by step with this. I remember going in and out of anesthesia and uh, my whole family was there because they said that all the family members can go up there now after surgery. And um, I remember they were all joking around and I was dozing in and out. I said, hold on one second. And everyone be quiet. I said, I'm trying to concentrate to pee. And everyone started laughing and continuing on. But that was me on anesthesia. And I had filled five bags of urine up that day. And it was the best thing that happened. The recovery time from that, I mean, I started walking 12 hours after surgery. They told me, the nurse told me, she said, look, the quicker you can get up, do your laps and go around here, the quicker we can get you out. You don't tell an athlete to get up and go so that he doesn't have to practice and stay longer, right? So you don't do that surgery or not to someone like me. Do your laps. How many do I have to do before I get out of here? I was there no more than three days. Did my laps, do five laps, seven laps. 
And uh, yeah, that was that was the best day of my life. I hold that moment very dearly because you will know right after what that feels like. That sense of a second chance at life. It's been 426 days to the date, December 10th, 2019th, I got my kidney transplant. Um, I feel great. I got all my energy back. I got my color back from dialysis depleting my color. Uh, I can eat again. I don't have to take binders. I went from 24 pills a day down to seven. Three anti-rejections, four multivitamins. Different variations, potassium, calcium, uh, one a day for men. And overall, I, I feel great. I feel amazing. You know, that's an understatement. I feel blessed. I'm, there's so much gratitude to my donor, my angel. She, she, she definitely gave this newfound purpose in my life to represent kidney, awareness, disease, failure, donors, recipients. The chain, everything, kidneys. The relationship I have with my donors is, is amazing. You know, uh, we've known each other since middle school. Now we're going to know each other for the rest of our lives. She saved my life. Um, what I did learn, though, is she loves Oreo shake. And I wasn't a very big Oreo shake person prior. And I, I, I love Oreo shake now. I was like... Did you like Oreo Shake before? And she, she giggled and said, yeah. And I'm like, man, I, I love Oreo Shakes every day. And I'm like, how is this possible? So uh, we found out about each other. Either her organ had a piece of Oreo in it, put it in me, and now I love Oreos. But um, uh, forever, that's my sister. I will always love that woman for what she has done in my life and what she's done to shed the awareness of kidney donation, kidney disease, and just showing humanity at its finest. What I've learned from this entire journey is people want to help, they just don't know how. People helped me financially, emotionally, and donated a kidney. People just didn't know how to help me. Be kind to yourself. You know, you have nothing to lose. Ask for a kidney. Put yourself out there. Don't fear rejection. Don't fear failure. Just go. It's worth it at the end. This is the best part. Um, are you willing to put yourself out on Instagram, Facebook, the news, the radio, and everything to put you in a vulnerable state so everyone knows your business, especially health. Are you willing to sit down day in and day out to figure out which hospital has the shortest time for both deceased and how many living donations can, can pass through their, through their site? And while you're on dialysis, are you willing to do a repetitive blood donation to every transplant center to say that you're up to date, even if you are looking for a deceased donor. Are you willing to go to these transplant centers, get accepted, and abide by their transplant, you know, guidelines? Are you willing to stop phosphorus binders? Are you willing to stop all those medications? By the way, this is six months of my medication pre kidney transplant. I say, what does a six month medication look like for me? This is someone talking to you if you're going through it. This is what it looks like for us. Are you willing to do that? I am. I'm willing to say, you know what? I have nothing else because I don't have nothing because I don't have my health. I don't have nothing. Are you willing to help me out? Would you be vulnerable enough to share that, you ask that question for yourself. Because I did that every day on dialysis. I did that every day pre-dialysis. And I did that even every day after kidney transplant. 
Can I ask for help? And the answer is yes. Remember, this is our life we're talking about. To my angel, my donor, my person who saved my life, thank you for everything you've done for me. And I don't only want to share it to you, but to everyone in the world to, to understand the, the, the gratitude, the gratefulness that you have brought into my heart and how I view humanity and how I should always be present no matter what. As long as I'm here, all we can do now is let it play its course. Thank you for everything you've done. You are more than an inspiration to me and many others. You are a person that I think about every day, about your wellness, your health, your, 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 your happiness, and just the bond that me and you will forever have. And for that, I am thankful for that. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to shine within myself, to be an advocate for kidney patients, dialysis patients, donors, recipients, and everything in the middle. Because of you, you gave me a newfound purpose. And for that, I want to thank you so much. Thank you so much.